All right, to our next story. And when President Uhuru Kenyatta was first thrust into the political limelight, he was then christened the late President Daniel Arap Moy's project, a tag that lingered on, leading to his loss in the 2022 presidential election. 20 oh, years later, oh, right. President Sorry. Kenyatta seems to have done the same, backing his preferred successor, Raila Odinga, who lost out to William Ruto. Here now is NTV's senior political affairs reporter, Kennedy Buredi, with outgoing President Uhuru Kenyatta's deep dalliance with the project tag. The year is 2002. President Daniel Toreitich Arab Moi has agreed to hand over power in what most people still believed was a dream. Just like most presidents in Africa and beyond, he wanted someone friendly to take over and protect him in his retirement. <laughs> A man thrust into the political world just about seven years before and handed over to key political players, among them now President-elect William Ruto, to shepherd his entry into the big boys game. Former Gatondo South MP Moses Kuria, who hails from the same area as President Uhuru Kenyatta, has told NTV that he was part of the team. The guy is brought to Gatondo by Moi, uh, 95, um, and, and then introduced uh, and advised on canoe ticket in 97, when the entire central region was uh, um, opposition zone deep opposition alongside the uh, Lolo Nyanza and um, uh, Bukusura. Those were, you know, the bastions of uh, opposition politics. And that time, um, uh, I was tasked with the, by the rest of the opposition friends because myself and uh, Moses Muya, who became our candidate, were the, were the flag bearers of opposition, alongside Gegi Mugai, you know, Uhuru's own cousin, you know. And... Um, of course, we defeated uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and Kano, uh, hands down. 22,000 votes to 10,000 votes with all the Kenyatta name and the Moi system and everything. Uh, what happened is a story for another day. The backing from Kanu, the dominant party then, and the network President Moi had placed all over the country, was a critical infrastructure in campaigning for Kenyatta, even as the provincial administration did so. He traversed the country, campaigning to be the third. William Ruto and a number of key Kano stalwarts played the role. Uhuru was, however, going against a veteran politician who had run a presidential campaign before, a fellow member of the popular Kikuyu community, a man who was enjoying massive support from almost all corners of the country, and more importantly, a man who was selling the anti-government agenda, Emilio Mwai Kibaki. <laughs> Just before the 2002 elections, and when it had become apparent Uhuru was Moi's peak, it was Rai Laudinga who led a massive rebellion in Kanu that dealt the grand old party a fatal blow and propelled Kibaki to the presidency. It did not come as a surprise that Uhuru Kenyatta was defeated in the elections but came out of the duel as an experienced politician. I accept the choice of the people and in particular, now concede that Mr. Mwai Kibaki will be the third president. Fast forward to 2018, and Uhuru seems to have conceived a plan to deny his deputy, William Ruto, the privilege of ascending to power and in place, threw his weight behind what his opponent saw as another project, Raila Amolo Odinga. On March 9, 2018, at the steps of Harambe House, the two shook hands, promised to put everything behind them, and forge a united front into the future. Hence the birth of the Building Bridges Initiative birthed through a nine-point agenda. This country of Kenya is greater than any one individual. And that for this country to come together, leaders must come together. <laughs> 
The plan to have Raila succeed President Kenyatta excited his Nyanza backyard so much that Raila's elder brother Oburu Odinga gave people hope that the presidency was now almost home. Every time we win the election, we are robbed of that victory. That victory is known to the whole country, but we never go to state house. Why have we not gone to state house when we have actually won the election through votes? This is because there is something which we were missing. And that's where something which we are missing is called system. Some people are saying ah, system is not important, but system is very important. And now we are with Uru Kenyatta, who is holding the system. Their union robbed many in the political world the wrong way, including Ruto and Raila's allies in NASA, who at first protested the move before they calmed down and agreed to support it. It was, however, short-lived as Amani National Congress Party leader Musalia Mudavadi and his Ford Kenya counterpart Moses Wetangula left and joined William Ruto early this year. The failure of the BBI and its subsequent shockwaves dealing the first blow to the Uhuru Raila relationship. He started seeing democracy as roulette, convert your money into chips, you throw them on a table, it spins, and you have to take what comes. And he doesn't like that loss of power because the first time he lost power, he lost it completely. Uhuru was also accused of pushing the Odinga narrative to his Mount Kenya backyard at the expense of his deputy who had made serious inroads. Many people thought, and I think even President Uhuru Kenyatta thought, once he ditches William Ruto, the Mount Kenya block will follow him. Yeah, if you look at the way the script was played, everyone thought that would be a natural consequence. But definitely, things did not pan out that way. The Mount Kenya block has largely remained supportive of Ruto. Ruto managed to paint Raila as a project of the government and President Uhuru Kenyatta. When you needed a friend to stand with you, my friend, I stood with you. Kitendawili never stood with you. Mother Karua never stood with you. All I am asking, I am not asking for you to support me. I am asking you to give me space so that I can deal with Kitendawili and the other projects. We will see a project, Yamutu. And cannot be a project. Nini wana ODM. Raila Omolo Odinga kweli ni project ya mutu. Eh? Eh? Ni project ya mutu. Kama ni project ni project ya wana hii? Ama ni namna gani? Raila siyo project ya serikali. Uhuru's continued push of Raila more so in his Mount Kenya backyard was seen largely as a betrayal to his deputy who had stood with him through thick and thin, having gone through the ICC trials together. One time that Uhuru Kenyatta was formidable, safe, invincible, was Uhuru Kenyatta because he had found the person who you know, brought in strategic complementarities and made him really shine. The Rift Valley community it feels very indebted that uh, despite the persecution of the people of Mount Kenya by the government, despite a lot of tribulations, uh, the people, the common man, has remained strongly in favor of Ruto in Mount Kenya. The events of the outcome of the August elections are already yielding murmurs of what role Uhuru played in Raila's campaign and whether his primary goal was to humiliate Raila as he was 20 years ago. For his many hits and misses, Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta will go down as the man who burst onto the national limelight as a political project that failed at the first instance and is going out as the owner of yet another political project that has met the exact same fate 20 years on. Kennedy Moredi, NTV.